Hey, what is up, you guys? You're watching Team APS. I'm Paul. And I'm Alec. And today, we thought it'd be fun to talk about the things we wish Yu-Gi-Oh! had. Like, would you say this is the top 10 things we wish Yu-Gi-Oh! had? The top 10 things we wish Yu-Gi-Oh! had. Stuff that, you know, would really improve mostly the TCG, but also just kind of the, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh! franchise. The experience. Like, these are things that the Yu-Gi-Oh! fan base wants, and if they don't know they want it, then they need it. Yeah, so we have these in, like, kind of a rough order of I, something. I guess you, you could call them least important to important, but yeah. really they're all important. You guys can decide. Drop a like, let us know which of these you end up agreeing with, or even before you start the video, what you want out of you. You're gonna see how much of our list matches. Number one, what we think Yu-Gi-Oh needs, an anime. Yeah, for sure, 100%. It's, a, it's such a weird thing to say, Yu-Gi-Oh needs an anime, because it's had the anime for so long. But, but it's crazy, we don't have one. To sort not of. really, I mean. So right now, there's Yu-Gi-Oh Go Rush which I think is... The, the sequel to Yu-Gi-Oh! Like it's, it's the sequel to Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. I think it's like ending pretty soon, but... But how will we know that? It's not in the West. Yeah, A, it hasn't been like brought over to the West yet. I think they've confirmed that it's going to be getting a dub, but like it's not out yet. But I think more importantly, and I hate to say this, it's just no offense to like people who like Go Rush. Sevens and Rush are different Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Like they're, they're kind of like spin-offs. They're like, I, I see them as spin-offs. What I want is like, Another, you know, Vrains Arc 5, like a core Yu-Gi-Oh anime. I want a sequel to Duel Mon Monsters. So straight up Yu-Gi 22. <laughs> I mean, at this point, like, I think that it just, people really underestimate how much having an ongoing anime benefits the card game and just mm -hmm. the brand as a whole. Because when there's an ongoing anime, you now have, like, cards and sets get influenced by that anime. Yes. So I remember back during like Brains, we were getting Salamangrate cards and getting Altergeist cards and Code Talkers and- You, you know what, maybe sets. we don't need an anime. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like those? <laughs> I don't like those archetypes at all. <laughs> but you know, like it kind of made sets exciting too, because I think like if you're watching the anime, then like waiting for those cards to come out in a new set and that like having them- uh, I did watch a lot of Arc 5 and that was how I felt during the Arc 5 era of Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, I think that that connective tissue doesn't exist anymore, and it seems like Konami's kind of been filling that gap with just legacy support. Which is cool, but all cool things have to come to an end. I mean, and I think, like, don't get me wrong, this is not me saying legacy support is bad. No one's gonna complain about, like, their favorite old stuff getting support. It's just more like, I think having something new can really anchor the game mm. a little bit better. And I know that I guess maybe the alternative to this would be those, like, animation things that They've been making, you know, Konami. Oh yeah, the animations that we get like yeah, a Chronicle Saga. bit of animation from. Though it feels like with those, from what we've seen so far, they're kind of using those more for like just general marketing, like right. market a product, market a deck and master duel. So Yu-Gi-Oh really could use. I really anime. think it could use an anime. I, I would just want something new airing and like put it on Crunchyroll or whatever. Yeah. Like make sure it's something people can see. That'd be great. Get it on TV. Mine is going to be. I think Yu-Gi-Oh needs to adopt a mixed multiple rarity system. So the yes. way that this works is this is something that a lot of uh, other card games have where like within a set, a card can come in multiple rarities. So maybe you can get it as a rare and then as a super and then like maybe as a secret. Or I guess in this case, it might be that it comes as a super and it comes as an ultra and then it also comes QCR. And basically the benefit to this is that if you are a budget player, and you just want to get the card and like care play what it in your deck, it has. it's functionally the same and you can get it very easily and very cheaply. On the other hand, you have what we get now where SP Little Knight was a secret rare in, was that Age of Overlord? Age of Overlord, yeah. And that was the only way to pull it, so how many boxes were you going to buy? Yeah, and so the thing is, like if you have mixed rarity, Little Knight could be easy to pull, but then also like if you want to flex, and you want to have like, get you, you know, a secret this, rare copy. yeah, you can get your secret rare copy and it's cool. They're both functionally the same. Everybody gets to like duel with the same cards, but you can just show off if you got like really lucky and you're proud of this pull or you, you know, spent 200 bucks or whatever on like a high rarity one. I know some different card games do this. Most notably Pokemon does it. I just think it'd be like an overall net win. I agree. Cause right now more Yu-Gi-Oh players play competently and competitively than ever. And at one time Yu-Gi-Oh, we ran scuff decks. We didn't always have the best cards. Now it feels like it's mandatory to have it's the best cards. It's mandatory to have like a lot of those cards if you're trying to compete. So I think everyone should get it. Yeah, it, it really, it comes the down people to who need it should be able to get their hands on it. It shouldn't have to cost them an arm and a leg. Yeah, I think particularly with staples, it's a really big deal. You need to get the pot of prosperity just for any deck to play well. And so mm -hmm. it helps. Also, a couple of quick things I want to say about this too. 
This is a system that Yu-Gi-Oh's had before. Um, back when we were doing our Sly for Slackers and Rare Hunter series, check those out if you haven't already, we were opening a lot of retro packs, and during the GX era in particular, like the early oh, GX yeah. era, cards came as like rares and ultimate rares in the same set. Yep. And it was crazy, so you could get like, you know, a rare copy of something like, say, the Transmigration Prophecy or Lightning Vortex or some other like Speller Trap staple as like a, a rare or a super, and then also you might get lucky and pull an ulti. And I think that was just a, a net so, win. Anybody could get their hands on those cards if they wanted to, but if you, you know, you were, you know, a little flashy, you want to flex your cards, you get spring for the ultis. Yeah, so I don't know, I think it'd be just overall a really good thing. And that's a good segue into our next one. What I think Yu-Gi-Oh needs is full art cards. Yes, yeah, I 100% I agree with this. I, or if not full art cards, I mean, they, they've already been doing a lot with like, Alternate arts lately, they've been doing more of those. They have been doing more, but I want to break out of the frames. I'm yeah. so sick of these traditional frames and borders these cards have used for so long. Let's just break the cards out of them. Yeah, I mean, it's it certainly, I know a lot of other card games do have full arts and they look really good. Um, it, Yu Gi Oh has full arts in Rush Duels. Yeah, yeah, that's that's an interesting thing. Rush Duel does do full arts. It's um, mm -hmm. I think that it might be difficult for Yu Gi Oh to just maybe it's, it's it feels so tied to like how those card frames look. But I know people online have done like mock-ups of how full art cards might look and work. And, uh, one of the things that I really like is they'll still keep the text box like bordered, mm -hmm. but they but then the rest of the card gets to be full art, and I think that would just oh, let the art shine. Just because like Yu Gi Oh art lately has been getting a lot better like i'd say just for like all the different archetypes it feels like there's more story in a lot of these card arts and stuff hmm. but it sucks when like i'm trying to kind of read like you want to know the branded story or like you know the arise heart story or whatever but like the pictures are kind of small yeah all your lore is trapped in this tiny little box and you could even i mean if you really want to you could limit it to like just the cover card comes like full right art or something like that but i definitely think like full art cards should be something they experiment with I mean, and they could they can make great prize cards they can make great, great chase cards and booster sets like there's a lot of uses for full art cards and i think the player base will appreciate it. and also speaking of rush duel it's a good segue into the next thing which is bring rush duels konami come on like i i know that it's, it's been out for so long yeah. And like it's had a physical product in Japan for years now. We brought the Switch game over and it's in Duel Links. Oh yeah, it's in Duel Links. So give us the physical cards. Now, in Konami's credit, I know that they are probably really concerned about maybe bringing over something like Rush Duels. It might cause confusion in the marketing and like people won't know what it is. And, uh, and, it, and it might do all that. But you know what we're missing? Some way to bring new kids into this card game. Yeah, Rush Duel might kind of be the way to do it. We were all kids when Yu-Gi-Oh! first aired. That's how we got into it. But today's kids don't have an easy bridge into this game. Yeah, I mean, I truly think that while this isn't technically one of the things on our list, and just stuff to onboard people in general is something Yu-Gi-Oh! needs. Mm -hmm. Rush Duel could kind of be that thing. If anything, it doesn't have to like onboard you and then you like start playing advanced format. You can stick with Rush Duel. Like you can right. stick with that format if you really find it fun. And I know for a lot of like the kind of Yugi Boomer crowd who sort of feel disenfranchised with the game and stuff like that, uh, Rush Duel solves a lot of the problems that That's people true. have. It doesn't just have to be for kids, it can be for us too. Yeah, like it actually, it brings the game back down to like simpler effects and kind of easier to just navigate to game states while still being really back and forth and allowing comebacks, so. And it's a fun way to revisit monsters and themes that we already know of, that we're already familiar with. Yeah, a lot of them are in Rush Duel. And uh, they can get quote unquote fixed in Rush Duels. Yeah, it's also strange to me because like they, like have Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s dubbed and stuff, but like there's not like a Rush Duel thing you can like buy, so. Nope, I guess at the time they had the, they had, yeah, there's Duel Links and they had yeah, the, that's the, Switch game. the Switch game, but we need the paper. Like, yeah. I think it, I think it's fair to say we need the paper. Yeah, so please bring Rush Duel over Konami, we would love it, thanks. You know what else I like in the Yu-Gi-Oh! card game? What would you like? I wish our cards had keywords. Oh, keywords, like kind of how like Magic the Gathering has. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as many. Magic has basically a dictionary of keywords, but so something to just shorten how much raw text there are on our cards. So here's my hot take on that. Um, I won't like push back exactly. Like if they wanted to do keywords, it would be fine. If you disagree, you can get out. Oh, no, that's good. Later. I, I think they just need to reformat cards a little bit better because it's, I, I know why they probably can't, but the, my biggest gripe with Yu-Gi-Oh cards is like, 
the effect is just one big dense paragraph. Mm -hmm. There's never like a lot, I think like just doing line breaks would make so many cards so much more readable. Because it's something that they added in Master Duel recently actually, was they made it where like the card effects are just like, okay, it's like full effect and then like line break, next effect, line break. So like you can just mentally read it more easily. Make them easy to, easier to parse. Yeah, it's easier to parse. So just making things like better, like in that way could be good. Or bullet points. I love when cards like Lightning Storm have bullet points. There's or so triple tactics few talent. cards with bullet points. They only use it whenever it's a card that's like, pick one of these effects to use. Mm. But I think that they really should just use bullet points or like how the OCG has, they have numbers beside the effects. They're like a Ooh. circled number, it's like a, a one with All a they circle. All they do is to denote the, the different yeah, effects so like within separate the effect. effect text. So to me, I think like keywords, like you said, would be like the Magic the Gathering thing where there's so many and maybe we don't want to have like a another dictionary problem where it's like you kind of got to like know all of them. I mean, them. we because we're, we're st we already started to get them when Konami stopped describing what piercing damage was and just started writing piercing. Yeah, yeah, to their credit, they've actually, they've been shaving down words here and there. Like they don't say spell and trap card anymore. They say like spell or trap and things like that. They don't say flip monster. It's just like flip monster. It's, it's flip monster, not flip effect monster. Right. It's like they're, they're, tri they're trimming it down. I just think that like actually anything that improves card readability is a win. Uh, yeah, huge I'll, win. I'll take, I'll take whatever. It's, it's a huge W. If it's keywords or whatever it is, I'll, I'll take it. And the next thing is a pretty big one for me. I complain about this a lot. I think Yu-Gi-Oh genuinely needs like a community manager or just better use of social media and like stuff in general. Yeah. I mean, they use, uh, I think they use their social media fine. You always know what the news, what the latest set is. Yeah, I mean, they do. Like, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh, it's got, there's a Twitter account, there's an Instagram, you know, there's a Facebook account. You can follow them and they will tell you like, oh, a new YSS has been announced or like a new product is coming out. It does the bare minimum. I just think that a lot of games do a lot more to like engage their community and like kind of create more of a, ch a channel of communication. Konami is really known for being that wall of silence right. sometimes where it's just like, man, they don't really tell us like, you know, much of anything about like, like when can we expect a ban list or when can we, you know, like just what's kind of going, like what was the thought process behind certain things. Cause it does feel like the fan base so often gets worked up into a frenzy and Konami does absolutely nothing to quell that. They don't say anything. They don't try and assuage our fears. Yeah. And I think one of the big problems too, is that like when a company doesn't ever explain like any decisions or whatever, then players start filling in the blanks themselves. And it's with, always negative. And that's kind of where you get this like, oh, evil company just trying to screw us over and you know, this and that. So definitely like, I, I think just more community outreach, maybe have some jokes and have a little fun with you every now and again. I don't know. I, I guess they have to probably get like their social media posts all approved or something, but like, it might be nice to like let the community know like, yeah, we're like, you know, kind of a cold corporation or whatever, but like also we can have a little fun. We can yeah, joke about Maxi. There's funny Twitter accounts all the time. Yeah, so I don't know, a little bit of, a little more fun in the social media would probably be good. Social media actually ties into the next thing I wish for the Yu-Gi-Oh uh, card game. Ban list dates. I miss those so much. In fact, let me add on to that. Endless explanations. Woo, you Honestly, asking for the yeah, moon. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm reaching here. But guys, at one point, we used to know when every band list would be. Yeah, it's crazy that that's, it's so long ago, but yeah, once upon a time, March 1st, September 1st, that's when new band lists came out. And- It was a set schedule. Now we get band lists uh, in a few months. That's their word. They just say like the next band list update will be in a few months. Over the years, they slowly got became less and less uniform mm -hmm. with when our band list came out and when we could expect them. To now, they're just like, hey, you'll, we'll get a band list in some months, and it really that's causes... not to like our benefit. Yeah, I mean the band list. It's just such a big deal for preparing for events and like just deciding like kind of just what you want to do with different decks and all that. But if you're a competitor and you're scheduling out the tournaments you want to participate in. It will be nice to know when when the format is going to change. Yeah. When should when should I start, you know, looking at TCG player to move some cards? When should I like take the foot off the gas and just see how the format develops? But yeah. we never know. I think it also gives people a lot of hope. Like, you know, when a format feels like it's getting homogenous or just kind of like boring or whatever, overpowered, 
it's nice to know, okay, this will end. Here's the this here's when this is going to end. And I can expect more. And then we also don't have the whole bandless expectation season when we're like, there should be a bandless right about now. Because yeah, uh, you really truly don't know it's now. It's like any any day now the bandless is gonna show up, right? Right, right? And like I said, I would add explanations onto that as well. I know that I'm reaching with that, but I think even just giving some baseline explanations for sort of why maybe decks were hit a certain way, it's crazy because that's a normal thing in like today's gaming landscape. Like, like I know that's a normal thing in most games, and I know we're doing a video about wishes, but this feels like one of those wishes that Genie tells you, I can't do that. Yeah, I know that there's, there's ups and downs to it, right? Like if Konami went out and said, okay, we limited this floodgate because we think it's causing this problem and this problem and it's like too much or whatever, we want to weaken its power. And people would be like, oh, well, then why didn't you hit that other floodgate and that other floodgate? Because they all do the same thing. And I know like people would kind of extrapolate and they would cause arguments, but I do still sometimes feel like when you get those ban lists that have like drastic sweeping changes, people kind of want to know where R&D's head is at with them. Because like if you played some normal like shooter game, or whatever, like whenever, or a fighting game, like they'll do developer diaries where it's like, you get patch you know, notes, patch notes, developer diaries, like we changed this by this much and here's why. Like here's, we wanted to change this person's risk to reward on this move, but still keep their play style intact and stuff like that. So I don't know. I mean, even Duel Links actually had like rough little like bandless patch notes. I remember. That's true. We, we know why cards get hit in Duel Links. But what if, what if we had bandless explanations, right? And Konami says something like, so we banned this card to increase sales of this card. Oh, coming I, I out can't our next that. Set. <laughs> yeah, I can't say that. Okay, well, anyways, the next one, uh, speaking of ban lists, is alternate formats. Mm. I know this is uh, uh, this gets talked about a lot. I'm gonna be honest, man. I'll keep it a buck. Yu-Gi-Oh needs some alternative formats. It's actually wild to me that we really and truly just have like the advanced format. And, and then that, the, for a long time, that was the only way we played this game. Yeah, you just have the advanced format, and the only other thing that we got are like that's konami sort of officially supports is like edison and goat which don't which get me wrong time wizard format. yeah those time wizard formats they're cool don't get me wrong but the biggest problem i have it's not even a problem with them mm. like edison and goat are fine but what if i want to play like my newer deck but just in a format that's more like lower power level, right? So like we're kind of looking at a format that's at like a mid power level. A format that isn't like time gated, but power level gated. Yeah, like let's say I buy the Crystal Beast structure deck and I buy like a few of them, or the Red Dragon Archfiend structure, okay. Cyber Strike. What these, all these structure decks we've played. And like I, you know, if I take it to a regional or something, I just get stomped by Snake Eyes or whatever the best deck is at the time. That's kind of demoralizing. And like we know the power level of Yu-Gi-Oh is pretty high. I think that it would be cool to just have like a format where the lower tier decks can compete and maybe you can get juicier games that way. Mm, like that would be interesting, a structured deck like format where you, that could be fun. where you play these like structured themes and most of like a lot of like the generic stuff that you'd slap into these decks is banned and you kind of have to just... I, and listen, at this point, I'll take anything for an alternative format. You can bring back a battle pack, do a draft thing. I'll, 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 I'll try it all. That isn't to say that there aren't cool fan-made formats that they've made, right? True. I've heard of Trinity, I've heard of Domain. I heard that like, people really do like those and they actually have like, big followings on them. So people should certainly check that stuff out. But I'm just saying that like for Konami, like it'd be nice to have just a, a middle of the road format. I fear, I think the reason they don't have that sort of thing mm -hmm. Is so technically part of the underdog format exists. I, f I forgot all about that. Yeah, it's a thing that Konami has on the Yu Gi Oh website, but here's the problem with it it's just decided by your local. So it's basically like format where like certain decks and strategies are like banned or not allowed, but it's at a per shop or per location thing. So it's just what does your local community decide is or isn't allowed, but that means that you'll never be able to have like a heart of the underdog YCS. That's lame. They should do that. But I guess that will take a. It's. I know I've seen some people try and have those types of tournaments, and it's always a mess. All of us at locals have to like agree on what's not what's allowed, what's not allowed, that's gonna get messy, right? Because we're all gonna wanna bring the strongest possible deck that we can within like the rule set. It's just, uh, yeah, like, you know, like is is your Plunder Patrol deck okay, but then my Vanquishel deck is like a little stronger than that? Yeah, yeah, we can't Should can that be allowed, you know, so. We, but we, but Plunders are allowed. Yeah, and then if Konami went in and like said it, then that's kind of like an omission that their decks are unbalanced by design and maybe that might not. Yeah, I know Konami doesn't like admitting when a deck is just stronger than all the others. Oh, there is but let's say we stay within the master advanced format, right? Yeah. 
You know what it really needs? What I wish it had? Okay, it's number nine. That's right. Cash prize support. In so many card games, cash prizes are just the norm. And we live in this post esports world where the idea of a pro, pro gamers exists, people trying to make a living off their games. And then I have to break hearts and minds when I tell them, oh, you can't do that in Yu Gi Oh! Like, it's actually yeah, impossible. I listen, the Pokemon prize payouts, like the mm -hmm. cash prize payouts, like they're sort of regional events, which are like their equivalent of like a YCS, they get like cash. Yeah. They recently increased how much cash they get. And you get cash like down to like top, like 32, top 64. You Woo! get like cash payouts. Plus like you still get packs and stuff. It's pretty crazy. Can you imagine like every time you top, you get a, you just, they cut you a check. <laughs> now, even if Yu-Gi-Oh did not do cash pricing, cause I know that it's probably like a licensing thing and whatever. I still think that there could be some big improvement to just the existing pricing. Well, when the pricing is an original Nintendo Switch, not even overhead, I mean. Yeah, I think that like right now, the prize card system barely even feels like it's like holding it together. It's like, you know, another verse Glutonia and stuff. And it's like these weird vanilla monsters that they're not usable in a deck and they're just not really very cool and they're kind of hard to sell. And if you win these events, you have to kind of just sell this stuff yourself on the mm. secondary market. Fine, but then if that's the case, like, why don't we maybe have the full art cards? They, those could be prize cards or right. or alt arts be prize cards or something. Or even just having the prize cards be like an exclusive flexi rarity, like Starlight, Ghost Rare, whatever, you know. So if you win the YCS, that's how you get the cool alt art Ash Blossom. And now that's like a flex that you can play. And it just, it would be better than another verse Glutonia, which <laughs> I just, its name is so funny to me, another friend's cool time. Yeah, <laughs> now, I, I get it, like, you know, neither of the two of us are popping YCS events, so maybe it's, I don't know, like, just better prizing in that regard would be a little bit nice. I would like our pro players to, one, be able to make a living playing this game, since they practically live and breathe Yu-Gi-Oh! anyway, but two, wouldn't that make it even more competitive if there was money on the line? Like, yeah, we have, we have such be. solid and strong Yu-Gi-Oh! players. Imagine what they would become if there was money on the line. Monsters, maybe. <laughs> you know, so. Okay, well, the final one on our list is more Yu-Gi-Oh! video games. When that, look, we said more, but I really does, I don't even really think we have Yu-Gi-Oh! video games. Exactly, that's what I was gonna say. So right now, we've got Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, we've got Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. You can play these games, but I don't actually consider them video games. Master, or certainly not Master Duel. These it's are like, like a simulator. They're simulators. They're fun. I love Master Duel to death. I play that game every damn day. But like the issue is that they don't really have any like soul and life. We kind of have recently been going on this kick of playing like old school games from like the Game Boy, Game mm. Boy Advance, PS1, PS2 era. And that was back in the time when like Yu-Gi-Oh! really felt like it experimented with its video games. Mm -hmm. You know, you had like the uh, like Duels of the Roses, really iconic one. It's a, it had a story mode with unique takes on our, our Yu-Gi-Oh! characters that we'd never seen before. New game styles, they made Capsule Monster Coliseum. There was the Sacred Cards, where it was like a kind of overworld Like a RPG. Pokemon style JRPG. Yeah, like, and even like stuff like Yu-Gi-Oh! Wheelie Breakers for the Wii, where like you drive around in your Duel Runner. Well, I don't know who thought of that one. They yeah. were insane for that. I mean, the concept's cool, even if the game is <laughs> it's a little, it's a little wonky. But like, the thing is, Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't feel like it experiments anymore. I feel like it's just kind of, they figured out, okay, we can just release these simulators and kind of make it like a they premium say, They say duelists want a duel and that's all we're doing. Yeah, and I would like to see like Yu-Gi-Oh! video games be video games. Again. What was the video game series where they played out um, these like turn-based like JRPG battle with the monsters? What, what series um, was that? Was that False Bound Kingdom? It might have been. I remember that was on GameCube. I think I think that's what it is. Where's that? Where's I, I want yeah. I want real Yu-Gi-Oh video games again, not just more simulators. Yeah, alternate takes on Yu-Gi-Oh, different ways to like, play. Give I'll play. I'll pay full price. Give us a Yu-Gi-Oh fighting game or something. Ooh, Give us a, a Yu-Gi-Oh RPG again. I'll take anything. I mean, I think like stuff like that really helps to make the IP really like you know spread its wings a little bit. You can mm -hmm. find something to like beyond just simulating the gameplay, the card gameplay. I get it. Yu Gi Oh is a card game. We all know. Like, yeah. Wouldn't it be more fun, more whimsical, more Yu Gi Oh? Because it's, it's more than a card game. So yeah, that's pretty much our list. Those are ten things that we really wish we could see out of Yu Gi Oh. I, I think that this, I love this game to death. I think mm -hmm. there's a lot more that it can be doing to like pull people in and like give you ways to enjoy it. Let us know if we left anything out in this video. If uh, you, can you think of an 11th 
wish for the Yu-Gi-Oh card game and the Yu-Gi-Oh franchise? You can probably think of 20. I wouldn't be surprised. Completely honest. If you liked it, give us a like. Yeah, subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! Check out some of our other stuff. Uh, YouTube actually has a recommendation just for you. So link it right there. And maybe right there. I don't know where the annotations are. Anyways, we'll see you in the next one. Pass turn.